Hello, everybody. You are tuned into HCAM Sports Talk Live. And joining us on the program, we have head coach of Hopkinton Hillers Girls Varsity Basketball, Mike Greco. And we also have the captains with us. Millie Sensini, Caroline Connell, and Alulu Murphy. How's everyone doing? Good. How are you? Very good. So this to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Uh, so the season is underway, and uh, we hope that it'll stay underway. Uh, but you have a couple games under your belt. And uh, Coach, uh, how has it been coaching this team so far? And getting ready in uh, this very strange situation with the pandemic, of course. Uh, how's everything been? And uh, how's it been making some of the adjustments, such as uh, practicing and playing in the masks and stuff like that? Yeah, you know, um, honestly, we're it's been great. Um, we're just, I think, really happy to even have a season. Um, we know that we're fortunate enough to be in a district where – you know, the um, administration is allowing us to play and, you know, providing us the resources we need to get out there. Uh, I can't say enough positive things about the group of girls I've got this year. Um, they work hard. They're committed. Um, they have been, uh, you know, we, we returned 11 players, all 11 players, as a matter of fact. And so it's really been the same kind of core for several years now. Um, so the chemistry has been off the charts and um, there's been, you know, some challenges to deal with and some logistics that we've had to adjust to, but, you know, once, once practice starts or once the game starts, it really does just feel like basketball again. And so it's, it's been really great to be out there. We'll start off, uh, with Millie. How has your experience been, uh, getting ready for the season? And I can only imagine it must be uh, tough playing with the masks. Uh, but how, how's it been so far? Um, yeah, it's definitely different, um, especially my mask, like you said. Um, and there's also a lot of new guidelines that we have to follow. But by this point, I think we've pretty much gotten used to it. Um, but other than that, practices have been fun. Um, the team has a really special bond, which is definitely important. Um, but given the circumstances we have now, um, I'm just hoping we get back on the court um, as soon as possible. Because since the season is shorter this year, um, we're coming close to an end. Um, but we're definitely lucky to actually have a season this year. So. And Caroline, how has your uh, experience been uh, so far this season? And you must be excited to be back out there. Yeah, um, I've definitely been really excited. Like Millie said, um, we're just really lucky that we actually get to play and we've been very appreciative. And something that coach says like every day in practice and at every game is that we really don't know how many games and practices we're guaranteed to have. So I think everyone really does take that to heart and especially the seniors. It's hard knowing it's like our last season, but um, we really do take it to heart and work hard and practice every day and push each other and compete. And Lulu, how has your experience been? Um, I'm sure you're happy to be uh, back out there. Yeah, it's definitely nice to play with everyone again. And it's definitely easier since we did return everybody. So it, is, it definitely is a little harder to like learn new things like with the mass and with like the new guidelines. But I think it definitely helps that like we all have already played together and everything. And uh, coach, uh, what's been the toughest transition for you this year? I know there hasn't been uh, too many rule changes, but are there any uh, procedures in practice or game procedures that have taken a bit of getting used to? I'd imagine, uh, a procedure change such as the limited halftime breaks uh, must yep. be a little more difficult for you. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the, the biggest the, the biggest things in the game have been, you know, there's no more baseline out of bounds plays and they're limiting the number of players, you know, that are in the lane on a free throw. Um, you know, so that's been a, been a minor adjustment, but I, I think you you nailed it when. You know, you mentioned that there's no halftime, there's no more pregame real, you know, pregame talk and things like that. So it's kind of, we show up, we get off the bus, we stretch and we play, you know, and I'm sure the kids like it because they don't have to listen to me give a, you know, 10, 15 minute spiel on all the things we want to do that night. But um, that's been a little bit of an adjustment. So it's been, you know, a lot more preparing and practice the day before. And uh, we'll go around the table to the players here. Um, so Millie, uh, what are some of the uh, things that you've been working on uh, in the preseason and, uh, what are some of your goals, uh, for this season, uh, to get your, uh, 
game a little bit better? Um, I've definitely been working a lot on my shooting and ball handling and also my confidence. Um, this year, um, I feel like, especially during the beginning of the season, my confidence has gone up a little bit. Um, and I hope to stay that way through the rest of the season. So. And Caroline, how about you? Any goals this season or things that you're hoping to accomplish? Um, yeah, I would say the same thing with Millie. Um, definitely confidence is a big one. Um, the past few years, our team has kind of been like rebuilding. And um, like Coach says, he's seen like a big difference in our confidence and you can just see it in the way we're playing. And I think that kind of like the energy and just supporting each other and even going through everything that we're going through with the pandemic and stuff, I think it just kind of makes us stronger and like appreciate each other more. And Lulu, how about you? Um, what are some of the things that you're uh, hoping to accomplish uh, this season? Some of the things you've been working on? Um, definitely decision-making would be one of them and just like limiting turnovers and kind of just distributing the ball to everyone, I guess. Excellent. Um, so coach, uh, I know it's a shortened season, uh, but you have a lot of great returning players to this team. And it's certainly unfortunate that there's no postseason or anything like that, because I think this team could uh, potentially make a big run, but uh, what's it been like uh, working with this group this season and dealing with all the uh, obstacles that uh, you've had to deal with to be able to play this year? Honestly, the, the obstacles have been um, have been such a small piece of it. Um, this, this has been a, a great group to work with this year. Um, you know, like the girls have said, we returned, you know, almost our entire group from last year. Um, so it's, it's a bunch of players that I've had since they were all freshmen and sophomores. And they have shown such tremendous growth, um, you know, certainly from, from two years ago, but, you know, especially from last year where, you know, I, I think that, you know, they're, they're playing with so much more confidence. Um, the ball is moving, you know, on, on offense so much more smoothly. Um, their, their, their communication and their, their trust in each other uh, is so evident. These girls spend so much time together, not just during the season, but even, you know, even off the season, um, that, you know, the, the chemistry is so evident. You can, you can see it really spill over on the court. So uh, I, I honestly, I couldn't ask for a, a better group. Well, it's certainly uh, some great talent on this team. Uh, so we'll go around the uh, table to the players once again. Um, Millie, what's been the uh, toughest change for you this season? Uh, obviously, there's the fact that you got to wear masks when you're out there and I know uh, some of the warm-up procedures have changed and, of course, the halftime shorter. Uh, is there any of these changes that you've uh, found particularly difficult to work with? Um, I would say that um, during the games especially, we're not allowed to, like, pick anyone up or high-five anyone, and that's been difficult because I love supporting my teammates. So that's definitely been very difficult, especially during practice too. And Caroline, how about you with uh, the changes? Anything that's been particularly difficult for you to work with? Um, I think definitely the masks. It can be hard to breathe and even <clears throat> just hear like our teammates at times. But um, a big one I would say is probably just like the social aspect um, outside of being on the court. Um, our team, especially returning, like all our players, we're just always super, super close and hang out all the time like during our – um, off season. So I think not having um, like our spaghetti dinners and just team hangouts and sleepovers have been tough, but we haven't let that impact us at all because we're still very close. We're very loud and talkative, as I'm sure coach knows. We're always like dying laughing in practices. <laughs> now, do you ever have to go off to the side? <laughs> what was that, coach? So the bus ride sing alongs on the way home or something, oh, yeah. that, something special. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you ever have to go off to the side and kind of like just pull the mask up for a minute and just breathe some fresh air <laughs> sometimes I mean it can be hard because obviously we have to keep them on but it's really not bad thankfully coach doesn't have us running sprints all the time so I think that he definitely takes that into account which is nice as long as the refs don't see right <laughs> Uh, Lulu, how about you? Uh, what's been some of the uh, toughest obstacles uh, that you've had to deal with this season with the changes because of the COVID-19 pandemic? Um, one of the things that's definitely different is the pregame ritual. Like we have like 
certain like traditions and like it's kind of like a routine that we had going like we would and then also like the posters that coach Greco would make like that really got us ready for the game and it's kind of like just like straight to business now which like in a way I guess is nice because it's just like we get straight to it but also it was something that we had done before every game for the past two years so it is definitely different. And uh, coach, uh, you had a couple games uh, against Norwood last week and very close entertaining games as well. Uh, What are some of the things that you uh, realized during those games that uh, the team needs to work on? And uh, how would you say uh, the overall performance was against Norwood? I mean, I couldn't be prouder of the kids for the way they played. Um, You know, I, I think the first thing that I saw was the the difference in the girls this year from last year in terms of just their their mental toughness and their confidence in themselves um you know it starts starts with the seniors on down that uh you know there, there's certain there's things to clean up in every game you know i know we got out rebounded in that game that's something we talked about a lot but you know we did a real good job of taking care of the basketball um you know we came back in the the second game and um was able to turn norwood over a few extra times and uh, we shot a little bit better from the free throw line. So, you know, there, there were a couple of little things, you know, there were two close games. Norwood is an excellent team there, you know, obviously two time defending champs in the TVL. So, you know, to, to play them tough twice, um, I think just really speaks to how hard the girls have worked for the past two years to, you know, kind of get back to this level. And uh, coach, I know the rosters had to be cut down a little bit this year to 12 players rather than the typical 15 Uh, Was there any uh, hard cuts that you had to make because of that? And I know every cut's a hard cut, but is there uh, any cuts that you made that you probably typically uh, wouldn't have had to make because of the rosters being cut down? Uh, Fortunately, no. Um, You know, we, like I said, we, we returned everybody. Um, We, the way we kind of just worked it out this year is we kept all the juniors and seniors up on the varsity. Um, You know, we kept a real small uh, JV group. We've been practicing, you know, all together with the JV ones and the, and the varsity team. So we've had, you know, plenty of, plenty of fresh legs at practice and stuff like that. And, you know, it lets the JV kids see what a varsity practice is like. And, you know, they get to learn from a great group of upperclassmen as well. So, um, you know, fortunately I didn't, I didn't have that situation this year. Um, but, you know, but it certainly, you know, has come up in the past and you're right, you know, cutting a kid is, is never fun. It certainly is. And, and, um, Obviously, the season had a later start this year. Was there any uh, homework that you gave your players when we were in the midst of the uh, remote learning and and practices uh, weren't able to happen? I should have. I should have. You know, I I didn't because it was never it never felt uh, certain that it was actually going to come about. And uh, and again, I knew I was in a situation where these kids had all played for me for, you know, not just for one year, but for two and three years before. So, um, you know, I, I knew we'd be able to hit the ground running without too much of trouble. All right. And uh, I'm curious, uh, especially for the players, what are some of the things that you did during this uh, whole remote learning lockdown situation we just had? Uh, Millie, we'll start with you. What are, what are some of the things that you ended up doing when uh, we, we all had to spend all this time at home? Um, definitely practicing a lot of basketball. Um, I have a hoop in my driveway, so I would try to get out as much as I can. Um, I also have a shooting machine, so I was using that as well, which is definitely a benefit. Um, but yeah, definitely trying to get on the driveway, um, as much as possible. All right, Caroline. And I'm sure your coach likes uh, what you just said there. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Caroline, how about you? Yeah, I was actually going to say something very similar to Millie. I think that, um, especially when we were doing, um, school over zoom it could be hard to kind of be cooped up like in your room all day and even just in your house with your family at times so just getting outside and um either like going for a run or um getting some shots up is not only like enjoyable but it's just nice to get out of the house for once all right and uh lou how about you yeah we did have the shooting challenge like through the basketball program then I was definitely also forced on a few family walks, as I'm sure a lot of other people can relate to. Excellent. Um, So it sounds like you all stayed active during this uh, time of lockdown. Uh, So do you have any uh, plans to uh, play other sports this year or play in college? 
uh, Millie? Um, I also play volleyball. Um, and our season got pushed back to like around the spring time. Um, I think that tryouts are February 22nd. So I'm excited about that. I still hope that we have a season. It, it'll probably be a little different going from basketball to volleyball rather than vice yeah, versa. <laughs> yeah. Caroline, how about you? Any future athletic plans? Um, I've done unified track in the past, which I loved. So I'm hoping that we're going to have even like basketball, a shortened season, but um, I definitely can't picture my life without basketball and just the whole team aspect and the leadership skills that I've gained from it. Um, so I'm hoping to play either club basketball or one of the schools that I'm looking at is really big on intramurals. So I think it'd be fun to get like a team of 3v3 or even just 5v5. That's terrific. Uh, Lulu, how about you? Um, yeah, I've played softball in the past, but we didn't have a season last year. So we'll see what happens with that. Yeah. All right. Maybe we'll see you out there this spring. Uh, Coach, how about you? Uh, what are some of the things that you did uh, during the lockdown period? Uh, was there any uh, game planning or were you drawing up some plays? What are some of the things that you ended up doing? Uh <laughs> Well, most of my time was spent chasing my two toddlers around. Um, that's, that's, you know, enough to keep anybody, you know, busy and exhausted. But uh, as far as basketball is concerned, um, you know, like Lulu said, we had a, uh, a shooting challenge that was going on for a couple of months called the 10,000 shot uh, challenge. Um, so I was running that. Uh, but I'm always looking for, you know, ways to get better as a coach, you know, different uh, offenses or plays or, you know, tips you can pick up along the way. All right. That's terrific. And um, how, how good did it feel just to get back out there and be back in the athletic center coach? Oh, it felt great. It felt great, especially with these kids. It felt great. That's terrific. Uh, well, we're certainly glad that basketball is back and uh, hopefully uh, it will continue. Obviously a little bit of a difficult time right now, but hopefully we'll see some more games this year. Uh, and I'm just curious for any of the players, is there any particular opponent that you are looking forward to, especially seeing this year and any particular opponent that you're going to miss not playing this year. And anybody could just uh, jump in. I think that Medway has always been like a game that we looked forward to because um, and like for the past two years, we always had so many close games with them, but we never really like, I don't, I don't I'm not sure if we ever beat them. But it was always really close. We went into overtime with them last year, I know. But that was that's definitely a game we'll miss. We're going to have to go back in the archives and look up uh, yeah. if you've beat them or not. I know all those games have been very close. Uh, I've done a lot of Medway Hopkinton games between uh, my radio gig and TV gig, obviously. And they're always terrific games. So I, I'd say that's a great choice. Uh, Caroline or Millie, what about you? Any particular opponent that you're happy to see this year or any particular opponent that uh, you're going to miss? I would definitely say Medfield. Um, I think since our freshman year, like they've always just been a big competitor. Um, and I think one year we ended up knocking them out of the playoffs and then another year, like they ended up knocking us out of the playoffs. So um, we definitely always look forward to playing them and they are in our schedule so um, hopefully those will be some games that we can get. Oh, yeah. Nothing beats a good uh, Hopkinton uh, medfield battle for sure. Um, I definitely agree with both Medway um, and Medfield. I think that we're just really lucky that we always have good competition um, within the Tri-Valley League. So it would be nice to get some good wins against them this season. And, Coach, I got to ask you, any particular uh, opponent that you're looking forward to see or any particular opponent that you're going to miss not seeing this year? Oh, they're all, they're all tough. They're all tough. I'm, I'm just happy we have to play games. Absolutely. That's the most important thing. And I'm happy uh, that you all get to get out uh, onto the courts and play some basketball. And hopefully we'll see a lot more basketball this year. Uh, thanks so much for joining us on the show. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Bryce trying to feed it up top, stolen away. Quick break for the Hillers to the rack. Off the glass and in goes Lulu Murphy and she draws the contact. The second game this past Friday night was the Varsity Girls game. It was a back and forth first half. The Hillers led after the first two quarters, 20 to 19. 
Show up to Hedstrom. Great defensive effort by the Hillers. Murphy feeds it out to Cho, up for three. Count it! Lauren wow. Cho knocking it down. Oh boy. 16 to six Hillers. Hopkinton added another 12 points in the third quarter and outscored Norwood 12 to 10 to increase their lead to three points. Here comes Cho. Round the defender. Good feed to the block. Up and in, Fossbender. The fourth quarter, however, was all Norwood. They outscored Hopkinton 9-4 and would end up taking the game 38-36. Lauren Cho had a team-high 12 points for the Hillers, while Kiki Fossbender added 8 points. Lexi Trendle also pitched in with 9 points of her own. 